Quickly recapping what we've learned so far, in Django, the migration or a migration is a way to manage and propagate changes to the database schema over time. Understanding the purpose of the Django migration workflow, we started to break down the potential steps that we might want to follow as a developer when creating migrations within our Django project. We started with a, a basic set or basic workflow. And then in the previous tutorial, we enhanced that workflow, adding some additional steps and complexities to our migration workflow. So now we have broken down the Django migration process into a set of steps, which remember, these are just the initial steps we may make changes as we work through the exercises in this course. We can now utilize this flowchart to represent the key learning areas. Our process will start at the create migration stage. We make the assumptions that there are existing tests which have all passed, and we make the assumption that the changes to the models have already been undertaken. So let's take a look at the mechanics of creating a new migration. In this tutorial, we're going to focus in on the make migrations command. The make migrations command, which we have already demonstrated and briefly described in the previous tutorials, is responsible for creating migration files based on changes detected in your Django models. So when we run make migration, Django analyzes our models and the current state of our database to generate a set of migration files. These migration files, which will be saved in the migration folder within one of your apps. This will contain instructions on how to modify the database schema to reflect the changes you have made in your models. Let's take a look at a breakdown of what migrations does. So first is model change detection. Django compares the current state of your models with the previous state stored in the migration history to identify any changes. This includes new models, deleted models, and changes to fields or relationships. Let's take a look at an example. In this project, we currently don't have any migrations. So we go ahead and make migrations. We are presented with a list of changes that is going to be applied should we apply this migration to the database. There is a little bit more going on here other than Django checking the code in your models to detect any changes that need to be reflected to the database schema. When we run the make migrations command in Django, Django performs several checks. Django will perform analysis on your model changes. So detected any new models. It will look for field changes. So it recognizes changes to your fields, additions, deletions, modifications, and also it looks for relationship changes. So detecting any changes to relationships between models, including foreign keys, one-to-one -one fields, and many-to-many -many relationships. Extending from that point, we may have included database indexing. So Django might consider changes to database indexes based upon the index and unique attributes of fields. And then it might consider any custom migration options that developers may implement for specific requirements. An important task of make migrations is to ensure consistency. So performing consistency checks to ensure that the defined models and their relationships are coherent and aligned with the database schema. And that works in well with the idea that we will also be told if there are any errors within our code. So if I run this command now, making the changes to my code, I remove the S. I'm clearly told here, or it clearly identifies there is a problem within the schema that we've created, and it helps or tries to help you determine the resolution to this problem. So in this case, I've just missed the S in models. That was, of course, a very simple problem, but Django can detect some quite complex problems with, for example, relationships between your tables. Once the migration system has detected the changes, it creates a corresponding migration file in the migrations directory of any respective Django app. So the migration file is a Python script that includes instructions on how to apply the changes to the database. 
We'll take a look at the anatomy of this file at a later point in this module. But skimming through it, you can see that Django has identified the resources and the changes that need to be made. So here we're going to create a new model. This model is going to be the attribute table. So that reflects a, a model within our models file and the fields and the data types and any other attributes that we defined on the fields. If you are familiar with databases, you would know that it utilizes a structured query language and not Python to execute commands. And what we're looking at here in this initial migration file is a Python script that defines a series of operations to be executed on the database to reflect the changes in our models. So at some point, this migration file will be utilized and translated into SQL in order to then be executed on our database. Now we can simulate or we can take a look at the SQL that is generated from a migration file. So here I'm going to be utilizing the SQL migrate command, which is a management command used to display the SQL statements for a specific migration. So I identify the app and then the migration I want to take a look at or generate the SQL for. And then this command will then generate the SQL statements that would be executed if the migration were to be applied to the database. So let's take a look. This is a bunch of SQL statements. You might like to utilize this command. There could be several benefits here. So for example, this will allow you to understand the precise SQL changes that Django will make to your database based upon a migration without actually applying those changes. Now you might utilize this option for debugging, troubleshooting, learning and understanding, maybe auditing, uh, thinking about database agnostic scripting. So if you want to create SQL scripts for a migration that can be used across different database systems, you can use this SQL migrate to obtain the database agnostic SQL statements and then potentially make changes for your particular scenario. Or of course, you might just want to utilize this command for documentation. Now it's not always desirable to run make migrations for all the apps within your project. You may want to specify specific apps to run make migrations. So you can extend the make migrations command, include the name of the app after make migrations. And that of course will then just look for any changes within that specific app. Now there are many different benefits of utilizing make migrations with specific apps. And this is probably particularly useful in larger projects with multiple apps. You may be looking for deploying changes to a specific app without affecting other parts of the project or when debugging migration conflicts or addressing issues, it allows you to really focus in on a single app. Our journey into our process has begun. We took a look in this tutorial at make migrations, one of the initial stages of the migration process. And we were able to not only look at creating migrations, but to review migrations, looking at the SQL command, the SQL migrate command, actually reviewing the SQL that's generated from our mig migration file. We do have a few more tutorials discussing some of the other features of make migrations. We'll take a look at that in the following tutorials.